welcome to the Soap Bible Study series from Oak Tree Community Church in South Bend, Indiana. We're working our way through the book of Jeremiah, and we have come to the fourth week out of about 12, I think, that it's yeah, going to take us many. to get through. Wow. Jeremiah is a long book. It there's, is. There's a ton of content, and even on weeks like um, last time we did you know, one chapter a day, this time we're yep. doing one chapter a day. Yep. It just takes a time to get through 52 yeah. chapters. Yeah, that's you know? very true. But we'll go back and forth between sort of like prophecy, poetry, and historical narrative. So right. it actually sort of helps break kind of it moves. up a little bit yeah. and, and, and moves yeah. it forward a little bit. We're in chapters 14 through 18 this week. Yeah. So bring us well, up to well, speed. So, so what we saw uh, up till now, we saw that Jeremiah now seems to be fully on God's side. Yeah. <laughs> From the standpoint that Israel does deserve punishment from yeah. God, because he wasn't there to yeah. begin with, and, and he even says, he, I, I wasn't there. Yeah. Um, but um, God told him, hey, go out and find an honest man, and he couldn't, Yeah. right? That had to hurt. And God told him, um, people are going to assassinate you. There's a plan. Okay. It gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> Part of your family's it's your in, family. this pla- in this plan, what? too. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, it had to hurt. Right, um, and God, and at the end, God even says, "What else can I do?" Yeah. Now it's written on paper, yeah. right? So you don't know quite how to take it. It could be, I, I don't know what else to do, right? But that's not God. Yeah, I think it's more God saying, "What else can I do?" This is I the mean, only, this is the yeah. you see what I've done. You yep. see everything I'm done. I've yep. done. And Jeremiah's like, "Yeah, I, am like, I may not like it, but yeah. I get it." Right. I love the fact that God is. Is um, and we're going to see a lot of repetition. You mm-hmm. know, we've seen this in yep. other books where it's, it seems like it's the same thing over and over. We'll do the same thing in Jeremiah, but I, I love the fact that God is done with Israel. You know what? Yeah. Y- you guys have passed the point of no return, and, and we see it this week. And yet, he's still having this conversation with Jeremiah. I think he's just prepping him, right? Yeah. Getting him, getting him up to where where God already is, right? Yeah. So it's kind of starting. There's a drought. Yeah. And, you know, we're like, oh, a drought. You know, big deal. Yeah. This is a bad drought. It is a bad drought. And it could be multiple droughts in here, too, right? Yeah. And drought, let's not forget, drought is one of the judgments that God promised all the way back in Deuteronomy. If you don't follow the law, if you don't obey me, here's the things I'm going to do. Uh, We're up to drought. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So here's the deal. It's so bad, even the rich are affected. Yeah. And you know that's bad. (laughs) That's bad. (laughs) Right? I mean, there's no, uh, the crops had no water. So, you know, that's certainly bad, but think how bad that really is. That means we're also going to have a future famine. Yep. Too. No matter what else happens, there's going to be no food. Um, how bad is that? The cisterns were dry, yep. so there's no water there immediately. Yeah. Either. So like the water towers, we hear the water yep. towers, the wells, the everything. Dry. Right. Yeah. Yep. Animals were dying because there was no grass. Animals, animals were leaving their young and, and going away. Yep. Um, Jeremiah prayed. He he obviously knew Israel had sinned. It was their fault, but yep. still, it's like help. Still it's people yeah. help. Yeah. I make, I, I make a lot of comparisons, and I'm going to keep making comparisons to the Apostle Paul. Yeah, pa- Paul did the same thing. You know, I in in Romans chapter nine, I wish I were accursed if it would mean saving my right. my you know Jewish brethren. <laughs> so many parallels. Yeah. To, you yeah. Know. So Jeremiah asked God, and God says, "No, don't pray for him." Right, and told Jeremiah, yeah, stop praying, stop praying for them. Yeah, and and then he said God was going to kill them through war, famine, and plagues. Yeah, and so we we see the famine coming up. Yep. Uh, plagues is kind of a natural thing there, and he's already talked about war. Yep. Um, it does seem that Jeremiah, it seems like Jeremiah was preaching the appropriate message to the people, you know what what God was telling them to. Yep. And then we have other prophets or 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 people who said that they were prophets. Saying the exact opposite thing. Yeah. Where Jeremiah is saying, you know, war is coming, famine, um, um, plagues. Yeah. And other people were saying, nope, it's all good. Yeah. Don't worry about it. And, it's got to be tough. Yeah. And in verses 14 and uh, 15, God really calls them out on that. And I'm thinking, basically, um, if you think of it from the Big, big Ten, the Ten Commandments, they're violating the Third Commandment. The third commandment is don't take my name in vain. 
which mm. is not swearing or cursing. It's don't misuse my name. Don't claim authority or whatever. And God specifically says this. They're, pro they're prophesying lies while claiming authority. My authority. I did not commission them. I did not send them. I did not speak to them. And right. that they're doing this in my name. That's what the third commandment is about. Uh, authorizing things that God would never authorize. Right. 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 So, all right, all right. So we get into chapter 15 and, and God, you know, comes back and says, look, don't even pray for him. Yeah. And then he kind of continues with that. And he says, thing, right? look, even if Moses and Samuel pleaded for these people, I wouldn't listen. Which to me, that is two things that, that is, you know, you've, you know, backhanded compliment, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is Moses and Samuel. This is a huge compliment for them, right? For God to say they were such great intercessors. Yeah. You know, but even if they were there, I wouldn't listen. And it's a bad thing for Israel at yeah, this right. point. Yeah, These definitely. guys couldn't even, you know, yeah. save you. Yeah, there's a section in here I'll kind of paraphrase. God says, I will punish them in four different ways. Um, I'll have war kill them, dogs dragging off the, the bodies, birds and wild beasts devouring and destroying their corpses. Um, in other words, there's not even going to be people around to bury these yeah. people, right? Um, I will make the people in all the kingdoms of the world horrified what happened yeah. to them, right? So you have these other nations going, Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Nobody's going to have pity on them. Yep. You know, the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. So God, you know, to paraphrase, God's grown tired. He he doesn't want to hear it anymore. They didn't change their behavior. Yep. Um, so he's going to send them away for their own good. Yep. A little bit of, okay, there's, not that there's restitution there, but. Yep. There's always the hope of, yep. of, of uh, repentance and yep. restoration. And. As we will see, a common theme in Jeremiah, he will bring them back. This is right. not the end of them. This is not annihilation. Right. But this generation, you're done, man. This, right. is, this is over. Right. So interestingly enough, he, he makes this uh, statement a number of times. He's going to give away their wealth as plunder. Yeah. Right. So everything they've worked for, anything that they have in reserve, everything that they have stored, it's just going to go away as plunder. Yep. And not only that, but he's going to make some of the people serve the enemies in a land that um, they know nothing about. Yeah. And he says that a number of times, right? Yeah. You don't know the language. Yep. You don't know how to act there. But you are going to be forced to be part of that world. And you're just it's going to be disoriented. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Now, you had said um, we're going to see a lot of Jeremiah's personal life, and, and I think some of it starts coming in this week. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's a section where Jeremiah is actually worried about himself. Yeah. And you're like, well, that's selfish, but come on, we, we, all, <laughs> we all do that. Well, there's already been the assassination attempt. We're going to see that that keeps, they're, they're going to keep beating yep. him. They're going to keep trying to yep. kill him. They're going to keep trying to get him out of the way. In verse 10 here in chapter 15, he comes back with, you know, I regret that I was even born. I mean, there's a lot of, it sounds like Job going yeah, through a right. lot of this. I, right. I, I, I rue the day that I was born. You yeah. know, why didn't somebody who, who announced my birth, why didn't he die? And so, you know, I was, you know, the whole, the, I mean, we've seen this before. Yeah, right? but we also see a little bit of what he had to put up with, right? Yeah. And if we remember, he became a prophet at a very young age. Yes. And it seems like God told him some things. Yeah. Um, um, and maybe we find out some of these ne next week, but he puts up with um, insults from people because yeah. he has to. Yeah. He's given this message th that there's nothing good in this message. No. Right. How, as a prophet, you probably, not that you would spin God's messages, but there's nothing there, good There's here. nothing good. There's nothing to spin here. It's you right. people. God is done with you. You're gone. Don't kill me. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't shoot the messenger, right? right? That's exactly what's going on here. And right. so we get into chapter, uh, well, you know, the end of chapter 15, and, and he has this conversation with God, and God is still willing to encourage him, to support right. him. But at the same time, we get into 16, and God says, this is not going to be a good time for you. Don't get married. Don't have children. Yeah. Don't bring a family right. into what I'm calling you to do here. Yeah. And back in 15, I see one of the big keys. Um, he's asking God, 
will you let me down when I need you most? And it's, does he not trust God? When you're in the middle I, of I suffering, yeah. it's it's a hard it's right. a hard thing, right? Right. And I think it's honest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In, in he, the, yeah. He's very honest. He's very raw, yeah. emotional yeah. honesty in, in in a lot of this. Yeah. Yeah. And God does respond. You're not acting right. You know, He's, he's told the nations, "You're not acting right. You need to change." Now He's telling Jeremiah, "You you're not acting right. You need to change. Yeah. Stop following these people." Yep. Um, and stop worrying about them. Um, if you repent, if you say what's worthwhile, I will do, and he lists a whole bunch of things that he will do for you, yeah. and I will deliver you from, from this wickedness. Yeah. And the difference being that Jeremiah is actually going to do that, and the rest of Israel is not. Right, right, right. And <laughs> you the, know, and it's a huge there's disparity. There's going to be two separate things. Yeah, yeah. huge disparity in, in the response to the same message, essentially. Right. So Jeremiah told... Or God told Jeremiah, like you said in chapter 16, he can't get married. He shouldn't have any children. Yeah. And I'm assuming it wasn't where this is placed. I'm assuming that that was early on when he became a prophet. Because otherwise he would have gotten married at that Maybe. time, right? Maybe. It depends on how young he was. You know, if he really was a young man and God commissioned him to this. So it, it, there are definitely some historical markers throughout Jeremiah. But it's right. not chronological. I think I mentioned yeah. that at the beginning of the and series. We're going to jump around a little yep. bit. It's hard to place some okay. of those things. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Because yeah, there aren't really any markers in here. Not right here, no. Um, but somebody telling you you can't get married, don't have children, and then you figure out it's actually kind of a blessing. Yeah. Right. Because if I if I was married, if I did have children. I'm only going to be worried about them yep. and what they're going to do. And I'm going to be trying to make deals to save these people, yep. uh, you know, because they're, they're my, they're my family. It's real similar to what Paul said in first Corinthians seven. You know, if you're not married, I encourage you to not get married. We're going into a time of persecution. We're going into a time of crisis. You'll be able to spend all of your time and money and attention and focus in ministry instead of having to worry about your family. If you're married, if you have a family, that has to be your first priority. You don't get to put ministry first and sacrifice your family. Yeah. So I've seen too many people do that, and it never turns out well. You know. And so Paul said, either have a family or focus all on ministry. You know, right. and that's exactly what God told Jeremiah here yeah. too. Um, he also told Jeremiah two other things: um, don't attend the funeral meal, uh, meals, yep. and don't attend celebrations. Yeah, right. Kind of the opposite ends of the of the two. Yeah, right. So the funeral meals was uh, God took a person out. All right, God, so. Why are There's you mourning no to be person sorry. when yeah. they're under God's judgment? Right. Right? Yeah, don't do it. Right. And on the other side with the celebration, why are you celebrating? There's nothing to celebrate <laughs> here, people. Yeah. <laughs> don't even don't even go to that. Yeah. 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 And so God said in verse 10, they will undoubtedly ask you, why is God doing this to us? It's one answer. Yeah, idols. Idols. <laughs> so, right. It's like this is not news, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will show you no mercy, yet I will bring the people back. I will restore them, but I will also punish them in full. Yep, yep. Yeah, kind of cool. Kind of, I don't know, cool. One well, of it's the cool because it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that, that we will see coming up here is, is a reminder that this is God's land. It's not just God's people, it's God's land that he's allowing them to be in. And he told them from the very beginning, I do not allow idols and the worship of other gods in my land and so what did they do they brought that into land he said you can either worship me and stay in my land or you can worship them but you're going to do it someplace else they decided to worship other gods he said fine you're gonna i'm gonna send right. you gonna over there <laughs> so you don't get to do that here it's like oh and things you know maybe start to click yeah uh chapter 17 uh, part of the repetition comes back in here. Yep. Um, you know, there's the, but it's uh, very visual yeah. too, right? The sin of J Judah is engraved with an iron chisel on their stone hard hearts. Yeah. 
like, ouch. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, so we hear kind of kind of these kinds of words. Well, he says, with a here. diamond point. I mean, it's like, you yeah. know, diamond engraved. Your yeah. sin is diamond engraved yeah. on such a hard heart. It's yeah, like, on the <laughs> horns of their altars. Yeah. Yeah, their children are thinking about their false gods, and, and he continues with a with yep. a list of of list of things. There are a couple of verses here in chapter seventeen. One that is again one of those famous verses mm-hmm. that people like to know. It's verse nine. The the uh, depending on your translation, you know, the heart of man is wicked beyond repair. It's <laughs> desperately sick. You know that sort of thing. Who can know it? But if you look at verses seven through ten. Uh, Verse 8 is a great verse for Oak Tree Community Church because it matches or it fits from Psalm 1 and Isaiah 63. My blessing is on those who trust in me, who put their confidence in me. They will be like a tree planted near a stream, comes right out of Psalm 1, whose roots spread out toward the water, nothing to fear when the heat comes. Leaves are always green, no need to be concerned in a year of drought, which we just talked about a drought does not stop bearing fruit. So just an amazing verse that fits really good. our theme yeah. here at Oak Tree. And then... Of course, we're right, right past the Oak Tree part. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't say Oak. It's just a tree. Oh, right? okay. yeah. Yeah. But it's the same concept. I mean, yeah. It's almost a direct quote in, in parts of it from Psalm 1. And then uh, in the New English translation here, the human mind or the heart is, is more deceitful than anything else. It's incurably bad. Who can understand it? This is God speaking. This goes back to Genesis chapter 6. The thoughts and imaginations of their heart were always evil continually before the flood. But even after the flood, there is a sin nature that wants to lead us away from God. So we either follow him or we follow our heart. Those are our two options. So when people today, oh, just follow your heart. God says that's a bad idea. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's probably not what right. we should be doing, is right. following our hearts. Yeah, so the, this chapter ends with, um, I, I think it's a shift, and I'm not sure you're going to see it's a shift. Uh, but he tells he tells um, uh, Jeremiah to go stand at all the gates, yep. right? So word's getting around to everyone to keep the Sabbath holy. Yep. So, and this seems to be another key reason. Uh, right for the demise that yeah you know uh, that uh, God continually brings up yep but it seems out of place to me here. Well, the two main reasons that they were kicked out of the land was idolatry number one, and they didn't give they didn't honor any of the Sabbaths, not the Sabbath days and not the Sabbath years. So they didn't give the land. The rest. The rest that it was supposed to have. And so that's why it was 70 years that they were kicked out of the land. It was one year for each of the 70 Sabbath years that they didn't allow it. But the Sabbath, even the Sabbath day. So would they have been in that land 490 years? By the time, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was really, really, uh, you know, say 500 years. It was really even longer than that because when they moved into the land was around 1400 BC and Solomon died in 931. So there's about your 500 years. And now it's been another almost 300 years after that right. since okay. uh, before Nebuchadnezzar. So yeah, it's been, it's been a long time. Um, we have to remember that the Sabbath day was not so just supposed to be a vacation. It wasn't just their. It what? wasn't just their their weekend. Yeah. Right. The whole point of the Sabbath was they were not allowed to do their work that provided them money. Okay, their agricultural or, or their merchant or whatever. The whole point of the Sabbath was for God to insist that they stop working and show their dependence on Him. Right. So when they worked right. on the Sabbath, so that's trust. Day, Yes. Yeah. So it wasn't just right. obeying the Sabbath, you know, oh, I got to take a day off work. When they worked on the Sabbath, it was actually a shift of, I can't trust God to provide for us. I have to provide for myself. And it was one of the big 10. But the whole point of the Sabbath was not just rest, it was actually trust. Okay. They didn't trust God. Uh, yes. 
So. That, that part I definitely agree with. Yeah. Okay, then we end with chapter 18, and there's a, there's another physical example in here. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah is sent down to the potters. Go down to the potters. So he watches the potter work, and he notices that when there's something wrong, the potter starts over. Yeah. Right? And makes something else. Um, you had a great um, thing to interject. In well, there. in the New Testament, we find this concept of the potter and the clay with what seems to be salvation or, or nations or something. And there are some theological systems that say, well, God is allowed to do anything he wants with the clay, which is true. Okay. Right. But sometimes he turns this clay into something good and this clay into something bad, you know, vessels of destruction or whatever. But what happened that here, that's not that. what happened here. What happened here is the potter is working with the clay and the clay refuses to cooperate. Mm -hmm. And it's so it's quite a different meaning. <laughs> the potter changes it into something else. It's not because the potter wanted it to be this thing over here. It's because the clay was not willing to be worked with, and therefore, the potter changed right. its mind. Significantly different. Thing. Big different. Right. Big different result. So when we find vessels of mercy and vessels of destruction or whatever in Romans nine. It has everything to do with the people or the nations that God is trying to work with, refuse to be worked with. Right. And so the, the, the application is, if I say I want to do something good and they won't repent, then I'm going to punish them. But if I say I'm going to punish them and they do repent, then I'm going to bless them. Right. Okay. God, right. it's not and, that, and that's, and I think that's huge, right? Because from our standpoint, God changed. God his changed mind. his mind. Yeah. Right. That's and not what God it is. God doesn't change. Yeah. Exactly. It's not there, at all what it is. God option. has always said, "Here are the two results based on how you respond to me." Right. So it's not God changing; it's the person or the nation or the whatever. So you know, in in a lot of a lot of our a lot of people around you know well second chronicles 714 if my people who are called by my name will pray and and we've done second chronicles and that's not what it, it's not about the united states yeah. it's about israel but this one has a great principle that does apply to the u.s and any nation today we can hold off god's judgment and uh even just destruction our own self fulfilled destruction if we would obey God's principles, you know, I don't see that happening, but right. <laughs> we could based on what God says here in Jeremiah 18. Right. So Jeremiah takes this principle out, yeah. right. And, and talks to people and even next week we'll continue with it. Um, but now he's telling, he's telling Judah, God's planning on this destruction. I mean, we need to stop, right? You yep. guys, we're doing evil things. We need to do what is right. And the people keep saying, we don't care. Which is really interesting because we've already mentioned the point of no return. And yet, maybe it's not quite a point of no return if God is... I mean, this Still. is the long-sufferingness of God. Right. If you bring in that word, the long time that God is suffering, you know, in a sense, the, the, the gracious, the patience, whatever... Yeah. I mean, God calls them back how many times? Right. Centuries, and they won't yeah, come back. Exactly. And we end this chapter with uh, people trying to deal with with Jeremiah, right? He keeps delivering these terrible messages. Yeah. We should bring them up on some charges. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How do we get rid of Jeremiah? <laughs> yep. Let's get rid of him. Uh, then we don't need to pay attention to him. Right. Which is <laughs> then our world will be much better. Our world will be so much better if we just. Don't have a Jeremiah around, right? Right. right. Uh, application for today, right? <laughs> well, eh, there are, right? right. You know, well, the me I'm just our the message. This yeah. our Sunday messages are not always doom and gloom, um, but they're always not milk and honey either. Yeah. Um, we still need to listen to God. Our God is still jealous. Uh, we still need to act right. I mean, these are principles that if you just look around the world today aren't happening yeah right and people are saying i don't want to listen to religion anymore i don't want to hear that yeah we're going to deal with you <laughs> we're going to we're going to put you in a corner yeah we're going how, to let's explain you out how we respond to when we're reading the bible studying the bible whatever is going on in our world a lot of times we have the same response right you know i don't want to hear the warning i don't want to pay attention right and we should we should and of course we see the same thing in our nation 
and you know we try to warn the people in our nation but you know right. ultimately god is going to do what god's going to do and when a nation goes away from him he has to judge it he has to punish it right so fortunately we still individually even if our nation yeah. doesn't go True. the way we want individually we can still respond to the warnings that we find in scripture and i hope you do and i hope that this uh this video and these readings are helpful for you in your own spiritual walk as you come to know him better and love him more uh, if they are helpful we'd love to uh, hear from you I'd love to hear those things and if you have questions we'd love to hear those as well we'll pick up here next week and in fact uh with the whole potter again yep. in chapter 19. see you back then Bye.